because you know going to see the neurologist there's so many things to cover if you if you're concerned you have neurosarcoidosis or if you have neurosarcoidosis how do you get the most out of that visit so i'm going to talk a little bit about neurosarcoid but also focus on how you guys as patients can help make sure you are getting the most out of that appointment so first off neurosarcoidosis the prevalence of patients with sarcoid who have neurologic symptoms is only about five to ten percent However, what's interesting is that about 30 to 50 percent of people, that's the first symptom. So unlike the pulmonary symptoms, a, a, a large number of people show up with neurologic symptoms and then eventually uh, the sarcoid manifests elsewhere. So why is that important? It, it makes it really difficult to diagnose. This MRI shows inflammation of the meninges here at the base of the brain, near the brain stem. There are many, and inflammation of the meninges around the cortex. Many different diseases can cause this, so it can be a very difficult diagnostic challenge for patients if this is their manifesting feature. Um, there is a slight female predominance, not major, but a slight female predominance of neurosarcoidosis. <coughs> so as I already mentioned, we use the term, as neurologists, neuroaxis, basically to mean head to toe. So basically, any part of the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system can be affected by sarcoid. Optic nerve, your vision, cortex, uh, where we think and process information, the hypothalamus, where we regulate food and temperature, uh, myopathy, the muscles, all the way from the top to the bottom. So as neurologists, you may hear us say over and over, oh, the central nervous system, the peripheral nervous system. What do we as neurologists mean by that? The central nervous system is encased within the meninges or the covering of the brain and the spinal cord. So the brain, brainstem, and spinal cord are considered to be the central nervous system. So if your doctor says, oh, you have CNS or central nervous system disease, that's what we're talking about. Peripheral nervous system, are the peripheral nerves, the nerves that go to the muscles, the sensory nerves that pick up information, and then the autonomic nervous system are considered the peripheral uh, nervous system. Why do neurologists emphasize that? For two different reasons. One, treatment of central nervous system diseases, even sarcoid, may be different than treatment of peripheral nervous system diseases. The severity or the significance is different, central versus peripheral. And the, um, <clears throat> the exam, so your neurologic exam will be quite different. Central nervous system diseases have very different exam features than peripheral nervous system. And any of you that are affected with neurosarcoid know this. The doctor's gonna be checking reflexes and comparing reflexes and telling you whether it's central or peripheral. So it's actually a complex exam that we're we'll using that information. So let's talk about the central nervous system. So what's the most frequent involvement of the central nervous system? The cranial nerves. Now, what do we mean by cranial nerves? This is the brain tipped up, and we're looking at the bottom. This is the brain stem. Coming off the brain stem are 12 incredibly important nerves. We call these the cranial nerves. The cranial nerves control the face and most of the sensations, vision, hearing, taste, okay? So these cranial nerves are really important and they all come in through various um, foramen or holes in the skull and get into the brainstem. These cranial nerves are affected of all the diseases of neurosarcoid the most frequently. The most common is what we call facial nerve or facial nerve palsy. You may have heard of that commonly called Bell's palsy a patient will have paralysis or weakness of one side of their face. Technically, if it's due to sarcoid, it is a facial nerve palsy, not Bell's palsy, but that's semantics, really. Um, but some people will show up with a facial nerve palsy, and only after evaluation do we discover it's due to sarcoid. The optic nerve, which is the nerve that, we, that the eye sends visual signals to the brain, a very important nerve, is unfortunately also involved Neuropathy means nerves, multiple nerves. Many different processes can cause polyneuropathy, including sarcoid. Mono, one nerve, one nerve. So sarcoid can cause something as simple as carpal tunnel syndrome, and that can be managed pretty easily. However, it can cause a serious mononeuropathy, 
called vasculitis, where you have inflammation uh, around the blood vessels of the nerve, and the nerve can actually be quite damaged. There's a sarcoid myopathy. Um, you get the granulomas within the muscle, and it can be somewhat painful. So there's different peripheral nervous system diseases. So if there's a concern for neurosarcoidosis, what can you do to make sure that appointment, you get the most out of it? Brain. First and foremost, and I actually want to thank Bonnie for making this point. She made it this morning. Bring your needs and concerns. You may be concerned about the results of an EEG or your MRI, but if the doctor is thinking about something else, you, you, you and he or she may not communicate. So bring your needs and concerns. For my patients with complex diseases, I find it very helpful to bring a caregiver or a friend who can give some extra history, take notes, or just be an extra set of ears to help you yeah, record what's going on. Bring prepared questions. If you have a complex disease and you're on difficult to monitor medications, write down your questions and take notes if needed or tape record it. That way you remember, <coughs> yeah, I'm going to do this and then get these labs done. If it's a follow-up appointment, get those interim test results and make sure you bring them. You've all been there. You go to a lab, the lab promises they'll send the records to the doctor and you get to the doctor's office and they're not there. Or you have an MRI and you thought that the MRI, they were gonna send the disc over. Bring that disc with you of that MRI. That way you know the doctor has it. Mm -hmm. um, bring your medications or at least have them all written out. In today's modern electronic medical record, they're supposed to keep those meds up to date, but I found somebody goes into the chart, changes the dose, or the pharmacist calls and gets a refill, and suddenly the med list doesn't match up with what you're taking. So just bring your medicines with you, or, or the, a list of what you're taking. Um, do, call ahead of time. We, I think Bonnie mentioned this. If you have a specific need, you know, you're like, boy, I really need to talk to the social worker in the clinic, or I need some extra time because I'm really concerned about how I'm functioning at work, let the doctor know so that you, the doctor knows you need some extra time. Um, and then at the end of the appointment, it's okay to say, doctor, let me repeat back what the plan is to make sure I understand. That way you know if you've covered everything. Okay, mm -hmm. again, just to emphasize, the patient history, your history when you come to see the doctor is incredibly important. Why? Sarcoid, neurosarcoid, as I emphasized, is different for everybody. Look at all the things it can affect. Your history will tell, help tell us what's going on. When did the symptoms start? How did they progress? Did you develop new manifestations? Did you have, oh, I had optic neuritis or I had vision loss, but it got, you know, after treatment with steroids, it got better, but now I'm having it again, things like that. Um, here's an example of a muscle biopsy. You can see the muscle fibers. This is one of those granulomas surrounded by lymphocytes causing inflammation. So. Here's a key thing. How was your diagnosis of sarcoid made? If you're coming and this is your first symptom, we'll talk about that in a second. But if you know you have sarcoid and you're worried about neurosarcoid, bring the key test results. Bring a uh, report of that lung biopsy or the cardiac biopsy. Bring a key image. If you have an MRI that's a worrisome, bring that MRI. Tell the doctor what other specialists have you seen. Even if you had a negative test, that's really important. Let's say you had a spinal tap done three years ago and it didn't show any abnormalities. Bring those results because then, you know, if we need to compare them, we have those results. <coughs> so, the evaluation, um, kind of as Dr. Knox said, talking about sarcoid can take a long time. Talking about how to evaluate for neurosarcoid can take a long time. So I'm just going to kind of do a summary. Because the initial evaluation can be very, very extensive. You probably will need an MRI of the suspicious area brain, spinal cord. You may need a lumbar puncture or spinal tap to look for inflammation. The, um, this is an example of the CSF. So the choroid plexus makes CSF. It travels down through the central spinal canal, up outside the, the spinal cord, up around the brain, and it gets resorbed up here in the arachnoid. So the CSF is collecting cells uh, and accumulating cells and um, other inflammatory markers as it's traveling around your brain. So by getting a sample of CSF, even from down here, we can tell a lot of what's going on around the covering of the brain. Um, you may need a biopsy, but as Dr. Cook was talking about how difficult it is to do a heart biopsy, imagine if you have inflammation here in your hypothalamus in the center of the brain. 
you're not going to find a surgeon who's very keen on doing that. So it can be very hard to get a biopsy in neurosarcoid. Um, if it's a peripheral lesion, you may need an EMG. Why? As we mentioned, how difficulty to confirm this diagnosis of neurosarcoid. Any of you who've gone through this workup know that it can be quite frustrating. And there's a complex differential diagnosis. You know, the, um, some of these lesions I showed you could look like meningitis, could look like tuberculosis, so we need to look for all those things. So how do we die, confirm neurosarcoid? Unfortunately, definite neurosarcoid is histologic confirmation of the affected tissue. Well, that occurs in about a third of the case. Most people are probably in the probable category, where imaging or CSF shows evidence of CNS inflammation, and you have peripheral evidence or PET evidence of sarcoid. There are many people who are in the possible category. Your MRI is abnormal, but you haven't been able to prove it's sarcoid in the periphery, so it's possible sarcoid. If that doesn't mean you don't get treated. That just means, unfortunately, you're living in this uncertain zone. Okay, I could talk for a long time about the treatment. Uh, Dr. Knox went over it already. So I'm gonna just kind of mention, with neurosarcoid, we have to balance controlling the disease, but avoiding immunosuppressant-induced infection, and then managing the side effects. Here's an example. This is a patient with a, a very bad disease called progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. This is due to having a suppressed immune system, a virus in the brain that's normally latent or quiet, reactivates, and it causes inflammation of the white matter. Okay, you can also get coxie, as we mentioned, out here in uh, the valley, reactivation of tuberculosis. So we have to make sure we're monitoring for these things. I'm just going to mention something interesting. Interferons, such as beta serum, which is used for multiple sclerosis, can sometimes exacerbate sarcoid. So I actually had a patient with both MS and sarcoid, and we had to take her off of beta serum. So, neurosarcoidosis. Here's an example of the optic nerve being inflamed from neurosarcoid. As you've seen so far in my talk, imaging is very important. MRIs. We, doctors love to look at images. And here's a point I want to make for you guys as the patients. If you haven't seen these images, ask to look at them and say, hey, come look at that MRI together. I think if you can see what the doctor's worried about, it's very helpful. Okay? Um, and it's always really helpful that if you have an old MRI that showed the disease when it was really active, bring it, because then you can compare it to a new one and see if things are changing. Mm -hmm. Spinal cord. Um, talk about the spinal cord for a long time. But I'm just going to mention some people with sarcoid, unfortunately, get involvement of the spinal cord. Here's an example of a lesion, a uh, sarcoid lesion here along the dura. Here's an example of what we call cauda equina syndrome. This is down at the, the base, the lumbar area. The spinal cord ends and you get nerve roots, you can get inflammation in this area. We call it the quadra equina, it's a Latin word for you know, the horse's tail, but it's inflammation of the nerve roots in the tip of the spinal cord. Okay? So intramedullary, you get white matter lesions within the spinal cord, extramedullary meaning outside the spinal cord, and then extradural, the meninges are inflamed. They can be inflamed down there in that lumbar area and give you a process we call polyradiculitis, which is inflammation of the nerve roots. Okay, so we talked a little bit about this. Um, if you have neurosarcoid, you require close monitoring. You probably come to see the neurologist fairly often to monitor the labs, to get re-imaged, and eventually, if the disease is under control, clinically stable to wean off those medications. So, you know, just to kind of conclude, make sure you get those scheduled test performs. Uh, especially monitoring and maintenance labs. Let's say there's a test you and the doctor discussed and your symptoms have stabilized and you're like, wow, I really don't want to have to get yet another MRI. <coughs> it's okay to call and talk about that and see if you can postpone it. But in conclusion, for your neurology clinic visit, ask questions, absolutely. As the patient, make sure you understand the recommendations. Get a list of the orders. Let's say you and the doctor plan on doing three or four things. Get a list or a copy of those orders so that if they get lost or misfaxed, you have a copy. Remember, neurosarcoid is a rare disease that requires intensive treatment and close monitoring. Make sure you guys, you're the patients, you're comfortable with the plan. Get the information, as Bonnie alluded to, on the treatments and medications. And I'd like to thank you guys for allowing me to speak.